What's up guys? It is Carly here bringing you day 31 of my 31 days of horror 2018. Yes, we are finally on the final day and it is Halloween on the day of uploading this. So I hope everyone has a fantastic Halloween and um, they had a fantastic October as well. I know I did. I did quite a lot of stuff this October. Um, so much that I actually kind of got fizzled out by the end of it, but um, I can't complain. I made the best of it and it was probably the most eventful um, Halloween season I've had in quite a few years now, so I'm very pleased. But yeah, I am here to talk about my 31st movie. Once again, I have made it through all 31 days of horror and I am proud to say that. So today I'm going to be talking about a movie that um, just came out this year and that is Summer of 84. Um, like I said, it just came out this year at the beginning of the year, or maybe more like the middle of the year. I was seeing people start to talk about it. I was seeing some mixed opinions on it. Some people saying it wasn't really that horror-ish and things like that. So um, I was very curious to watch it and we actually watched it as our headliner for our um, annual, uh, second annual Halloween marathon that uh, me, JP, our friend Matt, and then some others do. Um, the Shroyers actually joined us this year, so it was pretty cool, but it was the last movie that we saw for the nights, and I figured I would go ahead and review it. So well, let's get into the story. Um, Summer of 84, the story follows a group of four teenage boys. They're probably around 14 or 15 years old and they live in just a small suburban normal town and um, they're going through kind of a weird time because a bunch of kids are turning up missing that are kind of around their age range. Um, they're going missing, you know, they're faces are plastered in the newspapers and on the milk cartons and things like that so um, it's a very kind of scary time um, during the summer and these boys start to suspect that their neighbor, uh, the one kid's neighbor, is maybe behind the disappearances and the neighbor happens to also be a police officer so, so it kind of complicates things because he's the type of dude who is supposed to protect people and he's supposed to be trying to help find this uh, killer, but you know, these kids are kind of led to believe he might be behind it. So um, they all kind of gather together and they're trying to find evidence and prove that this guy may or may not be guilty. So that's what's going on in this movie. Uh, I really loved the characters in this movie to begin with. It's very much like it or uh, Stranger Things, um, movies like that, you know, The Goonies where you have just a group of teenage boys and they all kind of have uh, sort of dirty minds and foul mouths and things like that. And it's just very, very comical in a way. Um, I really like that about it. There's also like a typical girl next door type of character in this film. Um, the That girl I didn't really care for too much. That's probably one of my complaints of the movie is she's just a little over dramatic, you know, it's a very basic story of her parents are getting divorced and she's like depressed and things like that. And the dialogue between her and one of the other characters is just very cheesy and it's dialogue that you've heard in many movies before that. But of course this movie's set in the 80s and it was common back then for, um, you know, these type of problems to occur and that type of, I don't know, that dialogue is very much seen in these 80s movies. So you can't complain too much, but if there's anything, that's probably one of the things that got on my nerves a little bit. But anyway, um, the story, it's very, um, very to the point, you know, this neighbor, he's, um, very much giving off the creeper type of vibes. Like you kind of, just feel with his, the way he talks, his dialogue, as well as his body language and the way he looks at people and just delivers lines. He just seems very creepy and like something's off about him and you do suspect that he is the killer and that's the thing throughout this movie is it's very obvious that there's something suspicious about him so you're kind of wondering like I wonder if this is going to be a twist and he's not a bad guy or they're actually going to go all the way and he does turn out to be the bad guy and uh, the whole movie you're kind of wondering this they're making it very very obvious but you know with stuff like that where they make it overly obvious it doesn't always turn out to be what you expect so I thought that, thought that was kind of cool um, it kept my interest and everything and uh, made me wonder if like it was going to come with this really big twist at the end and things like that. Of course, I'm not going to give away whether or not it does, but um, I just thought it was cool the way it kind of 
plays out and plays through. Um, like I said, the K characters, I really enjoyed just following this group of boys. Some of their dialogue is very, very funny. It's not over-the-top comedy or anything like, like that. What I mean is it's very much like how the 2017 version of It was, where they're kind of making your mom jokes and uh, sex jokes and things like that. Um, I thought that was pretty cool and amusing. It's also got a very good score to it. It was very solid and used appropriately and the way the movie wraps up definitely demonstrates that this was a horror film. I could see how some people would see it more as more I guess of a drama thriller type of deal but just the ending plays out to be very dark and uh, kind of just gives you chills and I thought it was just fantastic. Um, overall, very good movie. The only complaints really are some of the dialogue's a little cheesy and uh, I feel like there could have been a little more character development. The movie's like 104 minutes so at first I thought it was going to be kind of slow but it actually goes by really quickly and you feel like you're t almost too much with the group itself and you're not really spending enough time with each individual character. You get very small peaks of some of their personal lives but it's just not a whole bunch to get too emotionally attached to them so if anything I would have liked a little bit more with that it kind of comes off as a very basic group of kids but at the same time they do have their own personalities and like I said they are funny so it's not a major complaint um overall good movie I definitely recommend it especially if you're trying to make a list for 2018 I would say this is definitely a contender for people's top 10s or 15s or whatever you decide to do. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. So good way to end October. I'm going to be checking out a lot more 2018 movies now that uh, the 31 days is done and over with. So yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, for the people who have been watching all of my videos for this month, I really appreciate it. And um, I've been getting a lot of comments and likes and things like that and I apologize if I have not gotten back to some people. I've been trying to reply to comments and be more involved but um, when it kind of builds up sometimes I just get lazy and honestly and forget to click on the video and reply to people or give them a little heart react or anything like that but I do appreciate it and I appreciate the people who have also subscri subscribed this month. I've gotten quite a bit and um, I'm up to 500 subs so as always that just motivates me to keep on making videos and continue to try to improve the quality and the content on my channel so thank you guys once again thank you for joining me for my 31 days and I will see you with whatever I come up with next